My husband's Delulu co-worker is convinced they're having an affair, and now she is claiming he got her pregnant but there's no way he's the father. I do not know your Reddit name but you finally gave me a reason to use this throwaway, I know you looked through this sub after you got advice here telling you to come clean to me about your affair with my husband, I personally couldn't find a thread that fit the description, but could be the wrong sub or you deleted it, so if you read this and it sounds familiar then yes it's about you. I have no plans of speaking to you in the future but I want to make a few things clear. Yes I do remember when we first met at the Christmas party and you kept trying to get my husband alone to talk, you pouted so much when he refused I thought you would quack. Do you remember how all of his colleagues were friendly with me? I remember when you approached my husband and I walking home from my birthday dinner, I'm pretty sure this was a coincidence but seeing my husband practically jump away from you trying to hug him was the highlight of my night. I know my husband is sexy, of course I know, I married him and had kids with him, but I bet you didn't know because you have only been at the company for a few months that your co-workers used to be my co-workers, I know all about you trying to get him alone after meetings, not only straight from my husband because you make him feel uncomfortable but also from them. Did you think he wouldn't talk to me after you accidentally sent him two provocative photos on two separate occasions? Did you think you could really get him? Did you look at his Instagram and think wow I want that life I just need to lie to his wife and it's all mine? Do you think knocking on my door when I'm hosting a dinner party to hand me printouts of your conversations with him that I would go off on the deep end and divorce him? I'm pretty sure HR have spoken to you already about your inappropriate behavior and misuse of his personnel file. I'm sure you are shocked maybe you didn't think my husband would report it. I don't know what repercussions you will get and I don't care, if you come near me, my husband, our kids or our nice home again police will be called. A word of advice if you're going to fabricate messages you might want to get rid of the wrong number or at least replace it with a name. Small update, she has been fired with immediate effect, I will update when we know our next steps. Thank you for the support so far. Edit, there's a more detailed post regarding the update. Comments where op has replied, did you try undit to find her post? I thought about it but I honestly don't know what sort of post I'm looking for. Like is it a post where she admits to lying to me about a fake affair or one where she wants to have an affair or does she believe she had an affair? Honestly I tried looking for it when she handed me the printout, she had an entire monologue memorized with apologies and mentioned Reddit a few times, but I couldn't find anything when I looked that night, it could have been a different sub or she deleted it. Restraining order? If she comes near us again I'll look into it, spoke to my friend who is a police officer, can't do anything yet, if she comes by again then I will discuss what our options are with him then. Something to do with intent if she shows up again, if I recall correctly. Guys I love the love I have had in this post so far, I didn't expect this much attention or support, I have my family to feed and my in-laws are around now, I will reply when I can, and hopefully have an update tomorrow or Friday. For those worried about my safety please don't be, cameras are working, kids are safe, dog is indoors and safe, our family is around, so if I don't respond for a few hours I will return. Did she say she accessed his personnel file or was it some other means? Sorry, I'll try to explain the personnel file part more as it's still the same since I left the company. Everyone in the company has interlinked systems with their own user profiles. Based on the department you work in you should have access to various systems. HR have a digital personnel system. Now every time you go into any file there is a digital signature on a logging system. So if in the HR demo went in a file twice in a few days a colleague in HR could see that while running the reports. There has been logs of her going into his personnel file, I don't know how many times, but she shouldn't have access to that system as she is in the events department, so either someone gave her HR access, which also means she can edit the files however she wants sort of like Wikipedia, or it was a system glitch that wasn't picked up. Update 1, first I want to say thank you to everyone who supported my husband and I in my first post, this might go on for a little bit so I'm sorry in advance. I probably won't be as articulate as I was in my first post. I never found her post by the way. A few people implied that there was no smoke without fire, usually I would agree and have been on the other side making these comments myself on my actual account but my husband is also on reddit and saw the comments and he wanted me to add some prior events. My husband is high up within the company marketing department that works closely with the event team in their field, when they work together on a project big or small they have to have meetings, the bigger the project the more meetings needed. My husband worked very closely with the colleague that went on maternity leave, the woman was highly recommended by a senior employee in the events team. So after she had training on the systems and brought up to speed by her department head and my husband for a big project he was friendly towards her. He remained professional at all times and the meetings they had were also never alone. The project was a success and then another big project landed in their laps, it was at this time the woman started acting strange just before the Christmas period, asking for clarification after meetings when the points had been discussed thoroughly. When my husband rebuffed this and directed her to her own manager it escalated to offering to discuss work matters over coffee slash lunch slash dinner countless times a week, telling him that he looked good that day, this was done using her work email. 
She met me at the Christmas party and sulked when she couldn't get him alone and a few days later sent my husband the first picture via social media, he didn't actually see the first picture until after she apologized in person, he accepted her apology before checking his messages when he was back at home with me, she had put a oops sorry wrong person message straight after it so when he clicked that message the first picture was there, which she could have deleted before he actually saw the message. A week later a similar thing happens with a second picture on a different social media platform, he saw who the message was from and asked me to open it, it was a little more provocative than before, but when she apologized she asks him if he told me about the pictures as she didn't want me to get the wrong idea as they were both obviously a drunken mistake. She was not a friend on any of his social media, so I don't know how she thought that was an excuse. My birthday comes along and when she went to hug my husband he jumped away as her actions were getting him worried. But after that her actions calmed down a little bit, she sort of stopped asking him out to discuss work so much. But then last Monday happened. Update 2, she was fired for sexual harassment and gross misconduct and this has led to someone else being suspended pending investigation. As my husband and I were both working from home due to the events that happened last week I was unaware at the time of my post that she had been suspended pretty much straight after my husband reported this to HR on the Wednesday, he handed over the text exchange, the messages on his social media with proof he never responded and he printed out the work emails he had received also. The reason for the rapid response was due to the nature of the allegations, but I can confirm she was fired yesterday. I have not been told what she said but she did not try to raise any allegation against my husband. In my comments I explained a little about the HR department system, the company uses an electronic personnel database which only HR employees can log into, no other employees should have access to this system, yet an employee in the IT department gave the woman unauthorized access to the HR system. A report was ran and she had been in my husband's file 34 times, I don't know what she actually did in there but apparently there were so many amendments that they had to restore his file from a recent backup. So the IT employee has been suspended pending an investigation but I don't know much else about that as it's not my job to know, I'm only recounting what I have been told by my husband and former colleagues. The past 48 hours has been crazy but I am glad that this post reached other platforms as a relative of hers found the post and reached out to us to apologize for the woman's actions, after a few messages were exchanged we had a very long telephone conversation. I will not go into specifics due to their privacy however I can say the following things with permission. The woman has been fixated on other men before, resulting in her having an order of protection against her and her needing treatment, the family believes this is due to a traumatic event she witnessed when she was a child. She is normally very stable when she has medication, the only problem with that is when she is stable she believes she is completely healthy and stops taking the medication causing a relapse. The person that she had the text exchange with was her teenage niece, who was not aware of her aunt's condition, the niece was under the impression it was a joke, then became scared when we called Wednesday morning so she hung up, she reported this to her family and they found out later that day the woman had been suspended. The family found the post and my comment referencing the text exchange and got my husband's name from the woman after confirming the post was her. The woman is currently staying with other relatives about 4 hours away from where we are, we will be contacted if she goes missing from their care especially while the medication is working its way back into her system. We will not be pressing charges at present but we have logged this with the police especially after talking about it with our friend and her family are aware of this. Our security is being updated within the next two weeks, the school and daycare are also aware of the people who can and can't drop off slash pick up my kids with photos of them. They have also been provided a photo of her and to contact my husband and or I if they see her near the schools or attempts to pick my children up. Hopefully I won't need to provide a further update to this and I'm going to have a bottle of wine and hopefully my husband and I will have a very good night's sleep. Edit, the niece found the post and recognized the sum of the text exchange I referenced in my comments, possibly the part about kicking me out of my house with my kids as that was the only part I was not too vague about but I don't actually know what else has gone on in their family behind the scenes as I didn't speak directly to her. Comments where op has replied, moving forward, police are aware of the situation but unless she goes missing from her family's care and shows up then I'm okay with how things are, but if that does happen I will definitely call them again straight away. What did you mean by amendments? She had changed a lot of information on his file. I'm not allowed to know the exact extent but she had access to everything HR would. They managed to confirm that she didn't access anyone else's file also, and the amendments were reverted back when the backup was restored. Me too. I'm a little sad it came to me posting online for someone to give her the support she needed but I am happy she is far away from my family at the moment. If I knew the full story back then I probably wouldn't have initially posted. But I'm glad her family took action when they knew she wasn't well again. Did you ever find her old post? I never found the post, but with people making so many suggestions I admit I was overwhelmed with crazy posts, I looked through them and none of them matched. But I honestly don't know what I'm looking for because she either fully believes she was having an affair with my husband and posted about that, or she admitted she lied to get me out the way. I also think it's a possibly she has posted but changed too many details to remain anonymous so I couldn't recognize it. I didn't ask her family for her reddit post history when we spoke. She never baked anything for my husband, she wasn't in the relationship either. 
Hope that answers a few, let me know if you have anything else I can clarify for you. Mini update, we're still in contact with her relative, she is doing better than she was but the medication still needs to work its way into her system. It took a little while and her whole family to convince her why her actions were inappropriate and she needed to take her medication. The family is still worried we will go the legal route, but we won't at this time. The niece has reached out to apologize for her part, but she is only young. IT person has been let go. However, I do have a bit more information regarding that. She had asked for access to check her own file to check a reference. The IT person did it and forgot to take back the access. They had also given access to a few other employees. Access has now been revoked from everyone with unauthorized access. I don't know what the company will do with him yet, but I believe they are talking this out with their legal team. The senior employee that referred the woman in the first place has also reached out to apologize. They had no idea there was even an issue until HR spoke to them. We will not be pressing charges against her or the company as we wish to just move on from this as well as we can. We would have if my husband's professional reputation had been tarnished by this or we seem to be in danger. But we are glad nothing more has happened other than a few new gray hairs on both of us. Update 3. Hello everyone, it's been a while, I was hoping my last update would be the end of everything but things got crazier than we would have expected. I have tried to write this time and time again but each time I did something crazier happened so sorry if this post is a little rough around the edges. For a while it all seemed like a bad soap opera. Things went from bad to worse to outright ridiculous. A lot of stuff has happened since my last post so I apologize if I ramble and appreciate if you have read my other posts so far. If you have not read the previous posts a quick recap, my husband worked with someone who became infatuated with him and turned up at our house with fake evidence of their affair, but she was slash is mentally unwell. So my husband and I agreed with her older brother Wayne, fake name, he is the father of the niece, that ex-colleague Sarah, fake name, went to stay with her aunt and uncle four hours away who would help her recover and make sure she stayed on her medication until she was healthy enough to get a job again and trust her to stay on her medication. Wayne promised us they would contact him if there was anything important to report and in turn he would contact us if she went missing in their care. So everything was going well until late March, my phone was in the house and I was doing some gardening in the front while the weather was warm and I look up and Sarah was in front of me, she was smiling and oh so glad that she caught me when I was home because she kept showing up when none of our cars were in the driveway. Before I even manage to process her presence she yells with excitement that is pregnant and my husband is the father. I swear my eyebrows contorted in confusion so much I couldn't see for a moment. It was evident she had not been on her medication, not because she was a mess, she was dressed very well and looked well cared for, but she was still under the impression that my husband had this forbidden romance with her. She goes on to tell me that their love child is due in mid-June. And that is I have been a dutiful wife and stuck by my husband through his infidelity then we have to get along if I am to be in their love child's life and she hopes that I do not hold a grudge of their love against their child. Which is all well and good if there was a chance what she said was accurate but I will state again that there is no way he could be the father, he doesn't have the time for an affair. With four kids, work, our joint social life and his hobbies, that are in our house, and our joint hobbies, unless he is actively cheating on his commute to and from work there is no chance. Also with her due date she would have gotten pregnant before she even met my husband. I mean he had a little something to do with the interview process by glancing over her resume but they didn't actually meet until she started working. As soon as she left I found my phone had numerous missed calls from Wayne and messages and voicemails begging to call him back, so I called back to get more information before I called my husband. Wayne confirms that his aunt slipped up when she was giving him an update on Sarah's condition which led to her spilling everything that had happened. I was not witness to this conversation so I do not know full details but I know there was an argument and it resulted in finding out the following. As soon as she got to their aunt and uncle's house that she admitted she was pregnant, they jointly decided that she wouldn't take the antipsychotics until she gave birth to her baby. She promised that would stay away until after the baby was born but she was adamant my husband was the father and then decided the day before she needed to let us know. She is a curvy lady so I may not have seen a four-fifths month baby bump when she turned up at my house but I was a bit preoccupied when she turned up. There goes my bragging about my observation skill set. According to Wayne their aunt and uncle were of the impression that my husband was the father of the baby as a result of a one-night stand and that he was denying his cheating to me and that she became obsessive after this event. But apparently she could do no wrong in their eyes so accepted all of this and took her at her word without confirming this with Wayne, so all of the updates we had from them was just lip service. Wayne was just as upset as we were, he knew his sister was spiraling in this delusion and his family that were meant to support her were letting this happen. So I relayed all of this to my husband who was understandably upset and concerned for our safety. We log this with the police and decide that we can go forward with a restraining order after paternity is proven as at that moment it is just he said she said because my husband could not prove he never touched her. The next time Sarah showed up in early April we see her approaching, we send our kids upstairs and casually walk outside to talk to her. I did not want to talk to her where there were no cameras, I don't want her near my kids and I didn't want her knowing the layout of our home. She asks to go inside and rubs her rounding stomach, I firmly tell her no, my husband tells her he wants a paternity test which she seems offended by because she never cheated on him but to prove that the baby is as she agrees to have one after the baby is born. As infuriating as the situation is it's understandable as it's her body. 
I admit if this was the first time I had met her witnessing the conversation I would be seriously questioning my husband, she seemed genuine, coherent and confident even. That was the scary part, that she fully believed that my husband was her baby's father. I've seen mental illness before and have never witnessed anything like this. She just seemed so sincere. Until she asked for money to support his unborn child and get things as even though she was staying with family out of town and as she no longer had a job with their affair getting out she wanted to be on her own by the time the baby was born. We refused and told her if paternity was proven then we would help. Late April we get a call from my husband's parents, who despite knowing the whole situation asked my husband if there was a chance the baby could be his after reaffirming the no they explained that they were at home and got a knock on the door and it was Sarah, she wanted to introduce herself because once the baby was born she wanted them involved in the baby's life. They already knew who she was already and what had happened so we gave them strict orders to not upset her because we do not know what she is capable of just that she is pregnant and unmedicated. My husband was disappointed and worried but understood they had to ask at least once, his no was enough for them. We do not know how she located their address, we think she may have followed us at one point or maybe it was on his personnel file she saw as his previous address. We checked with our kids that nobody they didn't know had approached them and they said no, even checked to make sure if they had been told to keep secrets, confirmed no, even our youngest, but they are never alone anyway. A week after this she came to our house when we had people over for a barbecue, our kids were at my in-laws and we had an opportunity to try to relax with our friends, we spoke briefly about what happened recently and then she was walking through my kitchen into the garden like she owned the place. She was cradling her rounder stomach and started introducing herself. This was the first time our friends had a look at her but she was not allowed to stay for long, my husband ushered her out quickly followed by me. Everything about trying to keep her calm to not trigger a mental health breakdown evaporated then, there were words exchanged, that she cannot come to our house, it was not possible for him to be the father of her unborn baby as they had never slept together, they never had a relationship, he didn't owe her any money, my husband let loose on her all of the frustrations. We saw Sarah's face sort of break. No violence on our part but for a second she looked confused and shocked and then she left quite quickly. We got Wayne on the phone after Sarah left to tell him what happened, he was going to search for her and found her later on that night. I started the process of putting our home up for sale. I needed a place that was a fortress and despite loving our home knowing she just seemed to be turning up when she wanted I didn't feel safe and secure there anymore. My husband and I discussed bringing the restraining order forward but we didn't want to trigger any mental health breakdown. I got word that after the barbecue a few of our friends were not 100% confident in my husband and started asking more questions trying to poke holes in his story. I can understand why so does my husband. She is so adamant that he is the child's father that something must have happened at least once. And that I was deluded for believing my husband. I don't blame them for gossiping. If it was happening to someone I was acquainted with I would probably think the same. But we were lucky that it wasn't any of our close friends or family that were gossiping. She turned up when we were visiting my relatives, the camera caught her looking inside our house through the windows, she didn't seem too coherent at that time, she stood outside the house for a long time and she was talking gibberish to herself and seemed paranoid. Seeing this made me accept an offer on our home and pick out a lovely new home in a gated community, we're in the process of moving now. Wayne reached out and advised that Sarah had the baby, who looked a lot like her ex, asked if my husband still wanted to do the DNA test because it obviously wasn't his, which he agreed to because he wanted to put this behind us and to remove any possible doubt from me, I told him that I never doubted him because I didn't, I was scared of the situation and behind closed doors we had a lot of heated discussions because we were stressed out but never because I thought he could be the innocent child's father. We also agreed so she could not ask for child support at a later time. The aunt and uncle have been corrected on their misunderstanding of the situation and also berated for the enabling behavior of Sarah. Some tough but necessary conversations were had with them according to Wayne. Once they understood what had happened they were mortified and wanted Wayne to pass on their apologies. He has taken PTO and will be staying with them for a while. After Sarah had the baby her brother, aunt and uncle gave her the ultimatum that she takes her medication in front of them every day and to not try to contact us or they put her into a mental health facility while her brother looks after the newborn until she is well enough to be released, she agreed to take the medication. DNA came back and surprise my husband is not the father. The look of relief and happiness on his face was priceless. It's been a crazy 6 7 months but things have calmed down now. Sarah is doing well apparently but still struggling as a new mother, Wayne is encouraging her to get in contact with her ex. She is slowly coming to terms with the fact she didn't have an affair with my husband now that the medication is starting to take effect. I gave some baby essentials to Wayne to pass on to her as I'm packing up things to move anyway. I may have missed a few events but if you need any clarification let me know. Glad life seems to be back to normal. Comments where Op has replied, Police involvement, we are going ahead with a restraining order. Sorry my post was too long and I had rewritten this a good few times so I may have cut out a few relevant bits. The incidents were logged with the police each time but a lot of times she did nothing but talk, no threats, no violence, just something off about the conversation at best. Also my husband wanted to clear his name first and in order to do that he needed to do the DNA test, restraining order would have complicated getting that done quickly, he wanted to prove to me that he hadn't cheated on me. 
Have you ever dealt with a mentally unstable person that just shows up out of nowhere when you least expect it? When you see that panicking is the worst thing you can do because you do not think clearly when you panic, it's best to keep calm and avoid confrontation. We did lose it at her once when she turned up at a barbecue. This woman completely believed her and my husband were in love and that 100% believed that her baby was his. And yes I care about the well-being of an innocent child, I'm a mother to four children, I can't imagine what it must be like for her being mentally unwell and a new mother. Hope this helps. Did you tell the people buying your home? Don't worry already made them aware of why we are moving. I wouldn't have given her anything, she honestly doesn't know that they are from us, I say that because she wouldn't even suspect they are from us because why would we after everything she has done give her anything out of the goodness of our hearts. I told Wayne and his wife that I didn't want her to know who they are from. He can say he picked them up at Goodwill for a good deal or that one of his friends knew his sister was pregnant, a lot of the stuff we kept in pristine condition, other than the boxes looking a little worn you would not know they are not new. Why didn't you get a DNA test during the pregnancy? Thank you, we know that there are blood tests but she refused and wanted to wait till after the baby was born, we were not, at the time, going to force a mentally unwell pregnant woman to do something she didn't want, we didn't want to risk her harming us or herself. Why was your husband relieved? He believed that I thought that I did have doubts about him. That there was a little voice in the back of my mind telling me he did it, that she was his mistress and he got her the job at the company to spend time together. You know the usual bored soap storyline, 